Good morning, friends, brothers and sisters in Christ. My name is Alex. I'm the head usher at the United Church of Christ at the Villages. I would like to welcome you to the video worship service, where, no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you're welcome here. Greetings to everyone in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. This is truly the day the Lord has made 
and we will rejoice and be glad in it. So wonderful to have you today as we gather as God's people in this sacred discipline of worship. Before we begin, I'd like to share some very quick announcements. First of all, on behalf of everyone in the congregation, I want to send a cheerful happy birthday to everyone who's celebrating a birthday this week. I hope you have a wonderful week with those you love. Second, for those who have been faithfully attending the pastor's Bible study in the past three months, I'll be sending an email with a quick survey to check whether you prefer the pastor's Bible study to be on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. or Sundays at 1 p.m. I'd love to get your feedback. In the meantime, Zaya, my wife, and I look forward to seeing you this coming Wednesday from 7 p.m. to 7.45 p.m. Third, please note that I'll be meeting with the pastoral search team for its first gathering with the intentional interim pastor training session this coming Monday. Please keep them in prayer as they begin their incredibly important mission, and I know they'll covet your prayers. And finally, to ensure we improve our online worship service and we keep it fresh, we'd love you to join us as a worship reader for the Call to Worship and Scripture lesson. It's easy. I provide the simple script. Denny, our YouTube guru, shows you how to record it on your smartphone and send it to him via email, and God's people will be blessed in your participation. For more information, reach out to me via email. It's noted below. So now, sit back and enjoy our time together, and remember, we are God's people, so join us together in unison in our call to worship. Come, sisters, and celebrate God's blessings to us, for God truly is in this virtual space. Come, brothers, and open yourself to God's guidance, for God truly is in this blessed space. Come, friends, to see more clearly God's presence in our lives, for God truly is in this glorious space. Come, brothers, to see God in this community of seekers, for God truly is in this holy space. Come, sisters, to pray, praise, and render ourselves to God, for God truly is in this humble space. Let us worship God, who is present wherever two or three or more are gathered in our sacred space. Because we worship God, whose Son Jesus the Christ came to show us paths of grace, 
and models of sacrifice, we too share in our generosity with our cheerful hearts of tithes, pledges, and offerings. We do so not because we must, but because we are loved. May the words of our mouths, the meditations of our hearts, and the giving of our gifts be a humble demonstration of our thankfulness to our God, our Rock, and to our Redeemer. Amen. Join me in our prayer of thanksgiving. Embrace of our soul, we thank you for your countless blessings upon all of us. We thank you for the food we eat, the work of the immigrants that help harvest the plenty, the friendships we love, your loving kindness in our lives, and the security of your eternal care. We acknowledge we are not alone. You are with us in the challenges and beauty of life. Through good and bad times, help us to see your immeasurable care and gentle embrace as we walk by faith and not by sight. This we pray in the name of Jesus, our Christ. Amen. The reading for today is from Genesis chapter 28, verses 10 to 17. And we are using the new revised standard version of the Bible. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of that place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed there was a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie is like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke up from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place and I did not know it. And he was afraid and he said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. And this is a gate to heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
moments in all of us that we can identify as memorable moments in our lives. Moments which we can never forget or have been profoundly pivotal to our own moments of deep personal transformation, whether small or great. For some of us, it may have been the awesome beauty of the birth of a child, or having come out successfully from a long and trying cancer treatment plan, or for others enduring a complex medical procedure that could have been the end of their lives on a surgical table. Perhaps for some of us it may have been walking away from a devastating accident or having lost someone we love in a similar accident that shook our deepest spiritual reservoir. For others it may have been to have met someone in their lives whose, whose words of hope simply made the difference between literally or figuratively life and death. And yet, for others, it may have been traveling somewhere in the world and haven't seen something of such splendid beauty that moved their soul so much that that experience will never be forgotten. I've had a few of those moments myself. The first one was the day I married my life partner, Zaida, of over 40 years. The other one was the day I was invited by the obstetrician to cut the umbilical cord of my daughter Jaslyn, the very moment she was born. And another one was the first time I caught my son, my two-year-old son at the time, enjoying the keyboard of my first real computer, a double 5.25 inch floppy disk K-Pro 2 with a 9 inch monochrome monitor. Ooh, they were hot. It was there I was convinced my son Alex was a special child indeed. Today he's in the software development industry and it all started with that K-Pro 2. Yet another one of my most memorable experiences was my visit to the site of one of the oldest ziggurats found in the ancient Sumerian city of Ur in modern southern Iraq. I mentioned it several sermons ago. It was there that I felt I was in the presence of the land of a man and a family who changed the course of ancient history and whose name is memorialized by three of the great religions of the world. That that place, that ziggurat I'm referring to, is what should be imagined by the reader of today's lesson when we read of Jacob's dream and a ladder. Although biblical scholars and translators do their best to help make sense of the ancient scriptures and help them come alive through our modern languages, the word ladder in verse 12 is not a correct rendering. A better translation could be stairway or ramp or even better, ziggurat. So the verse could be read as, and he dreamed that there was a ziggurat set upon the earth, the top of its reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. His dream and the description of a ladder was harking back to ancient Sumerians who constructed ziggurats that they believed served as stairways for their gods to move from earth to heaven and back and forth in the same way the angels were ascending and descending in Jacob's dream 4,000 years ago. That dream in Jacob's life became a pivotal moment of personal transformation in his life. In the moment in Jacob's life, he discovered that despite his stealing his brother Esau's rightful inheritance right under his nose, and lying through his teeth to his father Isaac by dressing up and even smelling like his hunter-gatherer older brother, God 
had a plan for his life that Jacob could never understood or would have never understood until that fateful moment that day. A dramatic moment when fleeing from his brother who had plans to murder him, which forever changed the course of an ancient people. That moment in Jacob's life was as Dr. Juliana Classinus, professor of Old Testament at the University of Stellenbosch in South Africa, suggests was not a moment of divine judgment nor condemnation of his previous conniving acts of deceit. Instead, it became a grace-filled encounter where we see God take an ordinary stone, an ordinary place, and an ordinary man and turn all of them into something truly extraordinary. That place he stopped to rest his hardened stony head. That stone he slept on, that dream he experienced, the professor says, is, is really a place where God's presence made a home in the world and where Jacob the trickster was transformed by God into a richly blessed man who served as a source of God's blessing, not only to his people, but a blessing to all the nations of the world. Let me ask, when did you last experience your Jacob moment? When did you, you last experience your most recent experience of, of a profound, pivotal moment of personal and quiet self-discovery or, or dramatic personal transformation, whether small or great? And when you did experience it last, how did it enrich and encourage and bless and welcome and inspire someone else's life? Sure, it's nice to be transformed by God, to have those amazing experiences. I call them at one time, I use a different phrase, a Pentecost experience. This is a little bit different, but kind of the same. But when was the last time? You shared it. You experienced it. When was the last time? If there's one great lesson that I have learned in my life and in my ministry, it's this lesson. I can choose to flounder in my past failures and hurts or, or, or present insecurities and anxieties as a human being. Trust me, we all go through them. Or, or I can take all of them, place them at the feet of God the healer, then ask the Holy Spirit to transform me and use me to make a difference in the world in the name of Jesus Christ. When I do that, no matter my age, no matter my limitations, no matter my circumstances, I am released from my self-imposed pity party to serve others in the name of Christ by helping even one single person to experience their version of a divine Jacob moment. Have you had yours lately? One way that I believe we churchy types, that we followers of Jesus, can all experience our Jacob moments is through something as simple as the power of you and me involving ourselves in pastoral care with one another. You see, I believe that members of a congregation who engage with the pastor in sustained and effective spiritual and emotional, emotional support of one another understand that God's blessing in my life, it's not just for me, that those blessings in my life are about those around me, those I can make a difference in their lives. God's blessings in my life are not just for me, but to bless others I can't see, and yes, 
most of them I can. And a congregation that truly understand that the promise God made with Abraham and Sarah, Isaac, Rebecca, Jacob, and Rachel, that is, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and your offsprings, belongs to us today as well. As a person, as a believer, as a congregation, a nation who is blessed by God, nourished by God, transformed by God, then blesses the world, all of God's creature, in response to God's amazing grace. That's the task. The question is, will I, will you, will all of us now more than ever during this crucial time be willing to do that? Be willing to experience God in our lives like Jacob did. And even in that place he experienced that he, he called it, what an amazing place. I pray, I pray that you do. But when you do, you do it because you're going to bless those around you and even the nations of the world. I pray we do. I really do. I truly do. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, at this time we gather together to pray for one another, followed by the Lord's Prayer. This week we have two new prayer requests outside of the immediate community of faith and, and two prayers in, uh, of folks in our own community. Uh, the first one is uh, Kathy B., a friend of a member. And the second is Jonathan B. He happens to be the son of one of my cousins who lives here in Florida struggling with ALS. We also include in our thoughts and prayers Joe P. and Rhea S., whose fathers pass away this week. Let us go before our God in prayer. Eternal Creator of heaven and earth, we come to you trusting in your amazing grace. We bless your holy name. We come to you because in who lies eternal life but in you and so at this time we we will trust you we pray for those in our prayer list right now those who are struggling with some physical or emotional or financial issue in their lives oh god you know who they are and we pray for your embrace upon them let them sense you today sense you for a special moment in their lives today. We pray, O oh God, for those that we've mentioned who have specific needs as well. We pray, O oh God, for your embrace, for your strong embrace of these folks yearning to be set free and yearning to be touched by you. We pray, O oh God, we will pray to you alone and we will trust you that you will do miracles in their lives, small and great, tiny and amazing, quietly and absolutely fantastically, according to your perfect will and glory for their lives. All of these, all of these prayers we bring to you, all of these needs and the needs of the world we bring to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our brother and our redeemer. Amen. Join me, brothers and sisters, in the word that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen brothers and sisters in christ i bless you 
and send you forth to be a blessing in the world. Just like Jacob, after especially his experience with God. Go, go and have your own Jacob experience. And when you do, again, all God asks is that we be a blessing in the world. Go in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you.